Action Hero Podcast. Igniting both the art and the science of functional medicine. Here's your host, Dr. Brad Watts. Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Nutrition Hero Podcast. I'm Dr. Brad Watts, your host, as always, in the podcast lab. I hope this podcast finds you well, and, um, and what a wild week, huh? So this, today is Friday. Today is Friday. What's the date today? March 20th. And um, so instead of giving you... Uh, into an interview that I did yesterday with a medical integration group talking about nutrition and some of the services that are necessary and uh, and certainly some of the services that are required from the natural healthcare community right here. So as the rest of the world focuses on the disease process, the, corona, the uh, coronavirus and the associated situation there, I want to step back a little bit and I want to focus on human physiology. I want to focus on your body's ability to ramp up an immune response. Remember, this is all about uh, enhancing or optimizing your immune system. And so there are going to be a couple of key points, three key points as you go through this. I'm just going to give you the key points right now so that you have them and don't miss them in the mix of this podcast or this interview that you're going to be stepping into here shortly. And uh, the key points are this, optimize the immune system. You gotta stop spreading your immune system so thin. The battles that your immune system's fighting right now with your food and other issues in your lifestyle, those are totally controllable. Do what you need to do in order to uh, concentrate the immune system. And so that when a virus comes knocking on the door, you have your immune system ready to go. It's not out fighting 100 battles it doesn't need to be participating in. So that's point number one. Number two, enhance the activity of your lymphocytes, enhance the uh, T lymphocytes, natural killer cells, enhance their activity with nutrition. You're going to get some of that in this uh, interview here as well. And then number three, you want to make sure that you're using products that have been shown in the medical literature to bust uh, films and bust the camouflage that uh, that viruses tend to take on uh, as they're cruising through somebody's bloodstream. So anyway, remember this is in no way, shape, or form specific medical advice. This is not for patients that have been infected with the coronavirus. This is uh, what I would recommend for you to do for yourself to enhance and optimize your immune system as you look to uh, ward off any of these issues associated. So anyway, we're going to step into an interview here. Uh, You are listening to Dr. Mike Carberry of Advanced Advanced Medical Integration along with myself, and he's just asking some questions as we're kind of cruising through uh, viral uh, epidemiology and all the stuff associated with it, and then really into nutrition is where I want to highlight. So anyhow, thank you guys for listening, and enjoy the rest of the podcast. All right, so here we are at our summit, and we're talking to Dr. Brad Watts. Uh, Brad is a chiropractor. You have your background in functional medicine and extensive uh, research uh, in nutrition and just a real all-around good science guy who understands this type of stuff and what i really like about you brad is when you explain things you explain it in a way that average people like myself can understand with greater clarity so welcome to our summit well thank you very much thank you very much it's it's because i'm a clinician at heart man so you get sucked into the science world and then backed into being a clinician and yeah so anyway well, glad to be here it's a rare it's a rare talent you have so I'm going to put it to the test right now because we need it. The country is in turmoil, as we all know. Um, I, I'm getting panicky phone calls from everywhere. And, you know, what I always say is panic is never a good tool to use when, when, when the crap is hitting the fan. Um, so let's bring in some data because data will always help people to calm down because you can work with data. You can't work with panic. So That's right. let's talk about the science of COVID-19. Um, tell us a little bit about that. I've touched on it earlier, but not to the degree that you can. So what can you tell us about COVID-19? Absolutely. So I just want to mention real quick before we start that obviously facts and data are not as sexy as emotion, but it is important to be able to use that when you're communicating with your patients. So because the ability to operate in that facts and data part of their brain 
consistently. So just throwing that out there for you, because when we go through this stuff, it can be scary and it doesn't need to be. So when we talk about coronavirus specifically, Doc, what we're looking at is a novel virus, something that is new to the collective immune system of basically the world at this point. Okay, which so is I've, heard that term, I've heard the term novel virus several times this week, and I didn't realize that's what it meant. So it means it's new. It's new. It's a cousin of other flus, other coronaviruses that we've experienced, but it's far enough removed from the ones that we've already experienced as a society that it's much more dangerous as far as its virility, like how quickly it will spread. So that's the yeah. thing right now. And we're seeing that the numbers just that we saw yesterday um, was uh, when the president was making his address before he came on, um, they were talking about uh, Italy and Iran have just surpassed China. China was at a 4% death rate and it's now dropping. So they're mm -hmm. kind of coming out of the tunnel. Um, but Italy is at 9%. So 30, 35,000 cases and 3,400 of them plus have died. Uh, Iran is right behind them at about 6. Point, I think 7% or somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, the United States is still down at 1.7%, very low death rate. Um, but we're the ones last to get it, probably because of the steps we've taken in prevention. So um, let's talk more about that, the science of this, of this virus. Yes, the, uh, the stats with Iran right now, I think you're going to see that as soon as they let World Health Organization back into their borders, I think you're going to see that it's going to be at least three times than that. They haven't done anything to control their population as far as social distancing or any of that kind of stuff. So we started in the United States, at least we started there. So um, one of the things that you'll see right now is that viruses are going through five stages of infection and replication. And so in general, what happens is you have a virus that is going to be airborne, somebody sneezes or it's on a surface, whatever, gets into a mucous membrane of a new person. So you coughing through the camera here and uh, in catching this virus in your mucous membranes, it's going to work its way inside of your bloodstream. And they basically try to land on the outside of a cell membrane. Okay, so that's the first step is you want to get to a spot where it attaches itself to a cell. When that happens, it'll penetrate the cell like this, if you can see that, it'll penetrate yeah. the cell and it creates a little hole in it, like it bores a hole in it so that it can inject its own genetic material into that cell, okay? A virus does not have the ability to replicate itself, thank God, okay? However, the virus will hijack your creative ability to replicate itself. And so it gets into the cell after it's penetrated the wall, it gets into the cell with its genetic material, and it's gonna go all the way to the nucleus. Inside of the nucleus is your printing press, basically where you're creating new and different genetic uh, code, et cetera, proteins, okay, on a daily basis, every day, all day long, that's all you're doing, is creating new tissue with the code that's in this printing press. This virus, what it's trying to do is get in there, hijack your printing press, and stop you from creating your own code and only create itself over and over and over and over again. What that does is it replicates its genetic code. It ends up killing off the cell and it will explode its contents and start spreading to neighbor cells, right? Which is why we end up in this situation where people, oh, I don't feel well. We well, don't feel well because of the cell death that's happening inside of you and you don't feel well because of the replication of this virus pattern, this DNA pattern, this it's RNA, but this genetic pattern that's being spread from cell to cell, okay? So that's the typical situation that's happening right now. Right, there's something that caused them to lower that immune response, um, mm -hmm. whether it's diet, lifestyle, you know, things they're putting in their body, medications, drugs, legal or illegal, um, right. and alcohol, tobacco, um, so all these things could low, lower your immune response, which then makes you more vulnerable to this. Correct? That's right. Not only, not only could you become you know, sick with the same virus more than once, right? If you can't convert from first phase to second phase, not only can you do that, but imagine uh, having a group of soldiers having to fight the same battle over and over and over again. At some point, those soldiers will just be like, oh my gosh, I'm, a, I'm done. And that's yeah. what's happening. That's what's right, happening. Right. Okay, so then uh, we may have already covered this or we started to, but in your own words, tell me, why do you think this 
coronavirus because I'm 58 years old. In my entire life, I never saw anything this take this much of the world's attention. Um, yet you look at people who have it and survive, and they go, "Yeah, it was like a mild cold." But it's more than that. I mean, I, the, the different compromised people. As I started reading different studies, I started realizing the respirators. You know, people are getting on respirators, uh, and they're still having trouble, and they're still dying while they're on a respirator. Respirator. What makes this one virus so much of a big deal? Is it the contagion of it? Yeah, I think that's what you're going to find. And there's some literature. I have a bunch of studies here that I can give you the citations for that you can include with this in the notes if you'd like. But okay. when we look at the contagion right now, the intensity or the virility of what's going on is a stronger virus than what we've seen in the past. It's moving quicker with a stronger force and it's lasting longer than what you would typically find with like a common flu. So one of the ways that they measure this is um, a quotient or an average of infection rates. So if you say, let's say one person has the infection in a common flu, you're going to spread it to, on average, 1.25 more people. Okay? With this one, they're measuring it based off the data coming out of China, all the way up to 2.6. Okay, so wow. it's got almost a double infection rate, which means that it's going to spread faster. Right? One, because we have immune system proteins that are close enough to, to attack this virus. Okay, we're not making uh, antibodies that are close enough to attack this. Like if it was just a, another version of the seasonal flu, yeah, you get it, but you have some antibodies that would recognize it. Like an antibody, let's say an antibody looks like this, okay? And a new flu comes along and now it looks like this. Well, my body still recognizes these four proteins hanging off the antibody, right? And so there's enough there to affect. But now if the flu looks like this, uh, this coronavirus looks like this, well, there's no antibody cruising around in my immune system that's preparing my immune system for this, okay? So it's just a, right. different, a different structure if you want to look at it that way. One yeah. of the things that um, you're going to find here is that susceptibility is the key susceptibility this is where i think modern medicine is going wrong okay we got all of it and you just heard it today you were just watching the doctors talk about a vaccine is going to be available the fda guy the head of the fda says yeah probably in a year a year that's what they said in yeah. a year in the year it's not even going to be a thing people are going to be like oh yeah you know it's going to be it's going to be like everybody's got war stories about coronavirus, and then the vaccine comes out, right? Well, that's pretty typical for even the flu vaccine. The flu vaccine, I think in the last 20 years, I don't think they've ever even hit it once where they had the correct flu in the flu vaccine. Right. That's so right. having an, an immunity for something a year from now that we have now is standard. That's, that's I, think right. I, I agree with you. I think they're missing the point. The point is, you know, Antoine Bichamps, you ever hear of him? Mm -hmm. Okay, so he was the guy who was the nemesis of um, uh, Louis Pasteur. They were both alive at the same time. Pasteur was promoting, oh, we have to come up with uh, inoculations or immunizations, mostly for sheep and cattle. That's what he was doing his immunizations for, to prevent disease. And ben Bichamps was saying, no, it's the terrain, it's the terrain, meaning it's the, 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 the terrain referring to the body. The body of the host or the body of the victim is what you need to strengthen because they already have everything they need to fight these things off. And that was back in the 1830s. So it's still the same discussion. It's still the same discussion. And right. so there's a, uh, a citation here coming out of uh, the Chinese Center for Disease Control. So this is what they told us. So who knows how much of this is that I'm acting, okay? But this is a study that we have to go off of at this point, and it's the, corona, uh, the coronavirus fatality rate in China. And so their mortality rate for people that are over 80 years old is just under 15%. That's massive, okay? That is massive. Yeah. Now, that's over 80 years old. Let's put somebody in your age bracket. If we get down into the 50s, right? It's less than 1.5%. In China. One and a half. In China. Now, let's go even further. If we drop it to under 40 years old, it's at 0.2%. Okay? Wow. That's amazing. So that's like seasonal flu situation, okay? Yeah. So there's something happening between the under 40-year-olds and the 80-year-olds, and what is it? 
what's the difference between somebody who's been around 80 years and somebody who's been around but, 35 years? Let me throw this in there. You might not agree with this. It's the number of stem cells in your body. Yeah, well, that's, that's what it is. What do stem cells do? They actually repair and replicate. Right. They're replicating what's been damaged. Well, yes. somebody that's been cruising around the planet for 85 years, just hanging out, uh, they've fought so many smaller battles than somebody who's 30 years old. Think about right. all of the different uh, things that are going on in their lifestyle. You mentioned it earlier with the food and the beverages and all the garbage that's in the air and the chemicals yeah. and stuff. The problem with this is, is that it's really about susceptibility. So when you have a stem cell situation, you're improving the patient's ability to repair from all of the battles that they've been living. Yeah. Okay. That's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. In order to improve a patient's um, immune system, like the optimal nature of their immune system, like if you can put it to a word, like optimization would be the word. Okay. Mm -hmm. If we can optimize it, stem cells will be one of the ways and I would say uh, probably one of the more effective ways based off of the literature I've been reading the last couple of days here, one of the more uh, important things to think about when it comes to improving a patient's like immune optimization profile. Right, and we, we are talking about a, um, a paper done in China in an upcoming portion of the summit where they took 10 patients, seven, three of them they gave placebo, seven of them they gave uh, a um, IV of uh, Wharton's jelly stem cells, and all seven of them recovered within two days. Even the one that was severe critical, that was the mm -hmm. worst one in the whole case. Most of them were severe, then there was one severe critical, and uh, on the placebo side, one died, one's on uh, advanced uh, respirator support, and the other one's in critical condition. No change to their uh, outcome, but the seven that got the stem cells are all basically cured, even the one that was severe critical. So it's amazing. Imagine, yeah, it's, a, it's amazing. It's stunning. Imagine putting something like that in a nebulizer, right? Right. That's, exactly. That's cool. Or, or even an IV, because the first, when you get in the bloodstream, first stop is the lungs. You know, it's like getting on a train. Okay, next stop, the lungs. And um, right. they said within 90 seconds, 90% uh, of what's being put in your bloodstream is in your lungs. Mm -hmm. So what they, what the papers I've read, they're talking a lot about the, um, um, cascade of um oh man so much i've been on the phone so much in the last couple of days but uh the cytokine cascade yeah and it, it's it has a great effect on stopping that so tell us what the cytokine cascade is inflammation inflammation right. and uh so when we look at the cytokine cascade well let's back up for a second your immune system are like soldiers okay this is the easiest way to think about the immune system is soldiers one of the reasons why uh the Nazis and Hitler lost World War II is because they spread themselves so thin and the allied armies were able to have a concentrated force at the right spot at the right time. Right. right? That's D-Day. Well, yeah. the same thing is going on across the world right now in people's immune systems. Problem is, is that most of us have spread our soldiers too thin. We're fighting a right. hundred other battles. And so the big bad virus shows up and you got two cells that are sitting there going, oh, crap, rather than. I need more having, ammo. <laughs> exactly. Rather than having a concentrated force that's able to say, not today. That's not going to happen today. Right. And so these battles are people that are, you know, causing inflammation with their food because they're drinking too much Miller. They're eating too much pizza. You know, food that is compatible with their DNA. And so when you're eating food that's causing inflammation, you're spending immune system activity, the same antiviral activity. You're spending it on pizza. Right. right. So amazing. it's kind of like when your analogy with uh, Hitler was pretty good. He was fighting for Europe. And then he decided, well, I think I can fight France. And what the Americans did is said, well, let's see if you can fight in Africa while we invade France. I mean, I think right. he said I can invade Russia while I'm fighting Europe. And then we just made it from four angles and they couldn't, they could spread themselves to, they're spread too thin. So that's great right. analogy. And that's what we're doing with our body. What, what do you recommend on that? I mean, like, well, you want to you wanna understand the cytokine response first, because you have your immune systems like a, a teeter totter 
and yep. pretty simplified, but your immune system is like a teeter-totter and one side of that teeter-totter is going to be our cellular immunity. The other side is humoral immunity. So you have like your original immune system and then you have your earned immune system, like antibodies and all the stuff. Okay. Right. The original immune system is what you want to optimize. You want to optimize it so that when the virus does show up, you have an opportunity to kill it off, make antibodies to it, and then move on with your life. Okay. Like we've been seeing, even in the China study, these people uh, that are under 10 years old, zero deaths reported. That's amazing. Yeah. That's am that means their immune system hasn't been spread so thin by their lifestyle that the virus shows up and they get sick and then they get healthy again and move on. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So understanding this teeter-totter is key. And if we can put three bullet points to it, the first one is like concentrate and force is stop stressing your immune system out with your lifestyle. I mean, that's the first one. Okay? Right. Like easy. You can control that. Anybody can control that. Yeah. How do you do it is the question. And so I want to just give you a couple of bullet points that you can communicate with your patients along the way, because you're going to be educating them on this stuff. Okay. And I would also encourage you, if you're watching this and you're going to be giving this to your patients, make your own video so that you can be the thought leader in this. And this is going to be three bullet points that I'm just going to give you that you can use. So write this stuff down. Okay. So number one is concentrate the forces. Stop eating food that's causing inflammation. That's, that's super easy. Okay. What do we do? Eat keto or paleo. Eat keto or paleo. Just get rid of the grains. Get rid of the sugar. Okay. Keto or paleo. That's, I mean, that's super easy, right? So first one, first and foremost, this is very important because you're going to decrease the amount of inflammation in your body systemically. And if you decrease the inflammation, even by 20%, that's 20% more immune power to go after a virus that shows up. Right. 20% more army in a different place. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's, and it's, it's phenomenal. So even Good. if somebody's immunocompromised, even if they're old because they've been fighting battles for 80 years, like just leverage what they do have into a concentrated form. Okay. okay. So that's step number one. Right. What's number two? Step number two is you want to make sure that you're able to enhance those cytokine cascades that you referenced. Enhance white blood cell activity, specifically lymphocyte activity. So remember the teeter-totter, this original immune system or innate immune system has something in it called lymphocytes. We want those lymphocytes to get revved up. You can increase their strength and their endurance with nutrition, right? These are where things like B12 shots come into play. These are where um, IV pushes with ascorbic acid come into play. Glutathione. The Myers cocktail situation that you guys use to great effect. Yeah, and we've, we actually, in my clinic in Chattanooga, we've started this already. Uh, we offered free B12 shots for our existing patients to come in and get them. Um, we started um, offering IV cocktails of different vitamins and minerals like the uh, Myers cocktail and custom cocktail using the IV vitamin C and the glutathione. But we also recognize people need something at home. So why don't you talk about that? Yeah. So um, at home, you're not going to send a patient home with a, a tree in an IV bag, right? And right. so what you want to do is give them something that harnesses similar technology and we utilize liposomes for that. Liposomes right. are cell membrane with the nutrients injected into the middle of them, and they don't require digestion. They passively diffuse across membranes into the bloodstream so that you can get the same style of a yield as you would with an IV bag. So to make this clear for our doctors to know, um, so, and some, most of them know this, and if they don't, that's okay. We're, that's why we're here. But when you ingest certain nutrients, your stomach can destroy it, dismantle it, and break it down into all its basic pieces. Some of them you want to absorb in their natural state. So by packaging them in a liposome envelope, they can be absorbed in the buccal membranes in the mouth, which is why you would want to, if it says, hold it in your mouth for 30 seconds, you don't want to swallow it right away. You want it to absorb through the mouth. Um, and a lot of your products with, from BioG, Biogenetics, um, that's how they're delivered because it's the best delivery system there is. That's right, and so, 100%. And so if we take something specifically like vitamin C, 
there's a study in China here that I can send to you as well uh, that was talking about um, mitigating symptoms, right? In a matter of a few days, being able to turn off the symptoms of these patients, over 200 of them, by giving them vitamin C push. Well, what were they doing? They were giving them, this is wild, okay? Six to 24 grams of vitamin C per day. Gra wow. With a G, grams. That's wow. a lot. Like you might as well that give them a lot. vitamin C pretzel if it's going to be that. That's a lot. Exactly. <laughs> right? That is a lot. And so, and so what happened is, is they're giving them one gram per hour. Were they you, taking it orally or how are they doing it? IV. IV. So you give, if you give somebody like, let's say five grams all at one, they're going to get rid of that stuff relatively quickly, right? So yeah. you get, you get a certain value of it and then it gets, you know, uh, deposited into urine, et cetera. Now, what they're doing, though, is this vitamin C does a similar thing that vitamin B12 does. B12 increases the capacity of these lymphocytes in something called a natural killer cell. B12 will enhance their strength and uh, the intensity with which they will, you know, their presence is known, natural killer cells, okay? B12 right. does that. So your free B12 shots, you're just boosting your patient's ability. It's really cool. Vitamin C is like the key to the ignition of the immune system. You can't drive a car without a key. You can't have immune system function without vitamin C. Your uh, lymphocytes will actually spend vitamin C. So to the extent that they have vitamin C available is to the extent that they're going to work. So if we want to have a stronger and longer immune response to fight this garbage off, you must have vitamin C. And that's what these uh, Chinese scientists found was that these IV pushes or drips of large doses of vitamin C for a week at a time allowed these patients to overcome the symptoms associated with it. Now, these are patients that did not have all of the, you know, the granular changes in the lungs already. Right. They weren't the ones that were on their deathbed. Got it. These are the people that got it, tested positive, and said, I feel awful. Yeah, so there's four categories that they were going by in China, and that's mild, common, severe and critical severe. So you're talking about the mild cases. Yep, we're talking like the bottom 60% yeah. of, of that. They said mild is have symptoms, but do not have any diagnostic findings on CT or X-ray, no, no uh, evidence in the lung fields uh, at that moment. Um, common, they are starting to get that. Um, severe is they, they have advanced levels of that. And then the severe critical, they needed mechanical assistance in respiration. Unbelievable. Yeah. So um, let me ask you this because, uh, you know, we have doctors out there, they're gonna have to explain this to patients yeah. and you are very good at doing this. So when people, they'll say, well, I got vitamin C at home, I'll just take vitamin C. Yeah. Why would that, I mean, it's sure it's gonna be helpful, but not as helpful as say liposomal or IV. Why would the hospital choose to do IV over a hard pill that people can just swallow? That's right. So you have an off mechanism in your gut. You have the off switch. When your belly starts to experience larger amounts of vitamin C, which is over 1500 milligrams, it will trigger a flushing mechanism, which means diarrhea. So your patients will say, oh, all I got to do is take five grams of this stuff a day. So they start down in the vitamin C and they're, and they're, sleeping, in, yeah, they're sleeping in the bathtub because it's not an effective way to absorb it. Your belly, right. your gut, turns off the absorption. So by bypassing it with a vitamin C push through like some of the companies like Azon, you guys have products that can use to move that in the right direction. If there's anybody from Azon listening, they do a great job with it. Yeah. And then, and then also, also with a liposome, a take home version, you can get extreme amounts, extreme dosing strategies without setting off that flushing mechanism. Wow. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. So the other thing with the liposome versus IV therapy, the IV therapy has 100% absorption rate into the, the bloodstream, right? Because you're just pushing yeah. it in there. Now, with a liposome, it's not going to be 100% absorption rate, but it's above 80. The thing that triggers the liposome difference, though, is the cellular uptake. Because once it's in the bloodstream, these nutrients, they still have to get into the cell. When a nutrient's in the bloodstream and it's wrapped in a liposome, the cellular uptake of something like glutathione, which is a very powerful um, antiviral antioxidant, is 100x 
cellular uptake over IV therapy, which is amazing if you think about it. That's that phenomenal. Is. Yeah, phenomenal. So when you look at getting these nutrients into the body, make sure that these patients are getting frequent exposure, right, to slightly larger than normal amounts of things like vitamin C and glutathione, things that are going to upregulate that Th1 side of the immune system that boosts those white blood cells to be able to fight stronger and longer. Right. Now, I take those same products myself, uh, amongst others from, from your company, because of that liposomal delivery. And I've done a lot of research in nutrition over the years as well. Almost went that path in my career, but then my practice was so big, I couldn't continue to down that path. But I'm very interested in functional medicine. So when you, I started talking to you years ago about liposomal delivery, I was like, okay, this guy really knows what he's talking about um, way more than I did. So I started using your products and I still use them. But th these are now available to our doctors out there. Uh, there's going to be links as to where you can get this, these products and you can be giving your patient something that is way more powerful, which I guarantee you they would prefer to have way more powerful right now in this environment. So if you tell them, look, vitamin C could help you um, uh, fight this off or prevent it. But the problem is if you take the vitamin C, you're going to buy it Walgreens. It's like a car with a governor on the engine. It's only going to go so far and then it starts to shut itself down. If you package it in a, um, a fat envelope and it's absorbed straight into the bloodstream and it has a mechanism now to get straight into the cell, now you're getting way more for your money. Way more of that product is getting into your cells to help fight off this infection and stop these reactions. Is that correct? That's correct. That's correct. Okay, so, so what a great thing to do for our patients. So there's a couple other products I wanted to ask you about. Um, one of them is biocidin, which... Yes. Um, so I know it's not something your company makes, but you work very closely with this company. Um, why don't you tell us about biocidin? Yes. So um, there's a thing with a virus. Remember how, how it lands on the outside of the, the cell here and it tries yes. to uh, take some camouflage from it and now it's cruising around? We call, yep. those, we call those films, right? It's a film over the top of the virus now. And so you want to be able to break those films as fast as you can. Right. And uh, there are a couple of different ways to do it. There's a product called Monolaurin, which we'll probably talk about in a minute. And yep. then and that's effective, right? It's effective. But the most effective at busting these films that I've seen in the marketplace, and I've, I've been doing this a long time, is this product by Asiden. Now, if you go to biocidin.com, not my company, I'm not affiliated with them. I'm just a clinician that finds a lot of value in what they do. Biocidin.com, they have a bunch of different variations of it. There's only one of them that I want you to think about in this instance for the absorption rates. It's called Biocidin LSF. It's biocidin wrapped in the same liposomal technology that we just talked about for vitamin C and glutathione. The absorption rates are massive. It doesn't get destroyed in your gut. And we don't want it in your gut. We want it to be in your bloodstream so it can get taken to places like your lungs. So when you're taking this biocidin, first of all, what, can you spell that in case anybody's trying to Google it? Yeah, B-I-O-C-I-D-I-N. Okay. Biocidin, and they have a bunch of different formulations with the same style of, of blends recipe. But I want you to look at the liposomal version if you're going to be putting this in your viral support kit. And that's the LSF. <laughs> LSF. Okay. So I, I personally use this. Um, my wife and I believe that this has a lot to do with the fact that we rarely ever get a cold, um, like over a number of years to get an average of a cold. Um, so very, very powerful thought the thing. Um, we knew somebody, I can't tell the exact details of the story, but we knew somebody who was in an organization that had a lot of um, people from China involved in that organization. And at Christmas, they all went home and came back and that organization ended up with a massive amount, more than 50% of that organization getting sick with these same symptoms. And nobody really at the time knew what it was. And they were in an isolated part of the world and they started using uh, something similar to this and it knocked it out in like two, three days. So was that our imagination or is that something that this can do? No, it's, that's reality. That's what happens when you optimize the immune system's ability to defend against this stuff. So. The uh, busting those films open so that your natural killer cells that you just got upregulated with the B12 and the vitamin C, that those things can get in there and start destroying virus the way that they're supposed to. So this stuff with biocidin, once again, LSF, 
Um, it is a very potent, very potent recipe of Th1 stimulants, so increasing immune system response and nutrients that will basically uh, begin to dissolve those biofilms or those films on the outside of these organisms. It's kind of like a Harry Potter thing where, you know, they, they take on the appearance of somebody else, but then all of a sudden it wears off and you can see, actually, this is actually the, the person we're looking for. This is the, uh, the coronavirus that we're looking for. And now you can attack them. It reminds me of when I was in college and my friend had a saying, you know how the police officers can spot the drunks at two o'clock on Saturday night? <laughs> they look for the headlights. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, That's right. Um, same type of thing. You can actually find and, and handle this much more expeditiously. It's giving your body another edge to be able to knock this virus out. All right. Once again, everybody, thank you for participating in the Nutrition Hero podcast today and for just taking a peek, stepping into an interview that was done for an online summit. Um, that would be yesterday. And so I just want to throw that out there for you. And obviously, as always, I hope things with you and your family are phenomenal. I hope things with you and your patients are phenomenal. And uh, we appreciate your patronage in listening to the Nutrition Hero podcast. Stay well.